So our first question comes from Marissa Dawn, 23 on Instagram. And she asks, what qualities do I need to look for in choosing a college? So Marissa Dawn, we have a couple of things that in my experience worked out very well for me. I picked up the qualities that I liked about schools the most. And you can break it down to any sort of things, but mine was definitely major. Major was a huge choice that I wanted to go somewhere that offered web development. I was always a nerd, still am. I love coding, that's what I do here. And that was number one on my list. Number two was extracurriculars. When you learn how to speak English as an extracurricular, <laughs> it's a nice thing. So I wanted to go somewhere that had unique things to do, not just your standard average of the day. So. Uh, depending on every single tour group that I went on, I was always asking, hey, what do you do for fun around here? And if the person that was giving the tour couldn't answer in a sufficient way, uh, that was an immediate uh, red mark on mine of the, this might not be it. Uh, campus location, huge thing for me too. I wanted to go somewhere a little bit small, but I also wanted to have the experience in the city and we'll get to that a little bit later. Faculty to student ratio, that's also important to me too. I didn't want to be in these massive halls where I felt like just a number rather than a person. I wanted to have that connection with people. Greek life is something you might be interested in. Not for me, but uh, just be aware of your surroundings and what's there. Uh, and also tuition, how am I going to pay for this? So all those things, uh, what scholarships as well. So what I did was I created this big Excel sheet had everything in there, and then I was able to pick and choose schools that I liked, rank them, and then say, okay, my number one thing is this, this school offers it, this one doesn't. What schools are in olive green? You know, my green check marks are ticked off, and try to figure it out from there. Every single school you should pick, though, is somewhere you should see yourself being. Don't just pick a college because you know you can get in, that might not be a good fit for you. So in my experience, that's the way. What about everybody else? I think the big one that I did not think about as a student, but I think about now as an adult, is career relations and alumni relations. Um, it's not something you might be thinking about right now in high school, but when you graduate, you want to have a good relationship with your school. You want to have a good relationship with your professors, with career relations. You want to have that lifeline for when you're stepping out into the world and you're saying, what now? And I think it's really important to think about that. And you can do research by reaching out to current students, current alum, um, and just even looking around on their website and seeing do they have a solid page dedicated or multiple pages dedicated to, you know, this is what we do for our alum, this is what we do for helping you find a job and everything like that. Um, going off of that, one really big thing that kind of helped me determine where I went to school, because it was between Champlain and somewhere else, uh, was job placement rate. You want to look at the job placement rate, and you want to look at the wording of the job placement rate. Because if someplace has a 100% job placement, that means everyone's getting a job. They have a 80% job placement rate in their field of study. That means 80% of students are getting jobs in their field. If you look at it, that's kind of better, because that means that the value of your education is higher because you're learning to do what you want to do. Um, that's so, a, that's yeah. a huge thing. Uh, that's a really big thing. I have the exact same degree as yeah. my buddy that graduated. He has a job, but it's not in what we do. Yeah. So seeing that number yeah. and what and, it correlates to is uh, you know, tricky marketing people. Yeah, and that might mean that they also have um, recruiters who come on campus. Yeah. Um, like I know Champlain had some for coding people as well yeah, as um, like the, they have a really big game development um, Place. So there are job recruiters for game development. They didn't have it for my major, but I still ended up getting a job in my field within like a year or two. So um, looking at those numbers is very, very important. And what internship opportunities they have, because internships are super important. Um, it lets you look at what you're going to be, what you want to be doing. And the earlier you can get internships, the better, because then you can like decide sophomore and you're like, oh, I really hate coding. I want to be in video development or something like that. So it lets you see early on whether it is exactly what you want to be doing instead of sort of wasting your time taking classes that you don't actually want to be in. I think it's also really important to note that um, while you may be choosing um, a list and have kind of a finite list of schools that you want to go to, that 
might not be what it, it turns out to be. I actually originally wanted to go to school either somewhere warm in the south or way out west in maybe like Arizona or something. But um, I ended up, you know, applying to a bunch of different schools because they had all of my um, green checks, as uh, Tyler said. And um, when it came out to it, even though some of these other schools had more attractive things to me, it was the school that kind of reached out to me and told me um, how much they could do for me as far as scholarships and, um, you know, accommodating my lifestyle, which was really, really awesome. So. Um, I guess it, you don't overlook choosing the college before, you know, hearing back from some um, applications and getting some scholarship and financial aid offers, because I think that was a huge deciding factor when it came down to like that last week of choosing a college. And I think obviously for a lot of people, the financial aspect is a huge deciding factor because sometimes a school that would otherwise be absolutely perfect for you is just not. It's not in the budget, in budget um, so you have to think about, you know, like Devin said, financial aid and everything like that, um, because obviously if you really want to go to school, you can probably make it happen, um, but that's going to take loans and, and a lot of thought, a lot of research, um, so obviously that's a big factor to think about as well. Yeah, and you know, you have to think about yourself, um, you know, obviously, ideally in four years you'll have a degree, but, you know, you want to limit the amount of debt and stress that's going to be on your shoulders because that is a it is a huge transition kind of coming into the, the real world and kickstarting your career and to have that extra baggage just from uh, you know spending the last four life the last four years of your life learning is is kind of debilitating sometimes. I would say if I had the option to go back and do it again, I would probably go to a less expensive um, public institution instead of a private. Yeah, I hear um, I hear a lot of people saying that they really wish they did their first two years at a like a community college and then transfer out, which is um, what a good friend of my best friend growing up did, and then eventually went up, went up to UMA in the same school and graduated. Right. You know with me as well but paid about you know half the cost yeah, right yeah there are different options you yeah. know to make it work um, for your budget but I think you know definitely if budget is one of your concerns like don't rule out public schools or state yeah. schools just because you think they're not as prestigious they're still accredited universities yeah. they're still yeah. wonderful schools with wonderful faculty so you know don't limit yourself by thinking small picture like that I think, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter where you start, matters where you end. Yeah. That's is, is a big yeah. thing that um, I, I was told by yeah. some guidance counselors in high school. That's, yeah. uh, especially curriculum is going to be the same for most of the base that you're doing. So as you mentioned, going to a community school for two years, you can get that base and you might learn, you might not have what major you have in mind when you enter school. So if you're going to save some money, Now's the time to do it. Get your gen ed stuff out of the way. Exactly, and then you can transfer those credits to someplace that really fits with you and might have not been in your budget initially, but you go from four years to two years, makes it a little bit more manageable. Definitely. Two things going off that. Um, number one, uh, something you mentioned was about the prestige. Don't go just because it's a brand new school. Harvard is not made for everyone. And I don't say that to say, like, not everyone's smart enough to get into Harvard. I, that's not what I mean at all. I mean that You can go to Yale, too. Yeah, you can go to <laughs> Yale, exactly. Um, and Yale start. might just be a better fit for you, like, geographically uh, and culturally. And I don't mean, like, that there's two separate cultures of people on campus. I mean that there's, like, a different campus culture to every single university in the United States. Um, and around the world, there's a different campus culture, and you, you're not going to fit into every single one of them. Um, and that's totally fine. If you don't fit into the, the campus culture of a brand name school, you can go to a non-brand name school. And you know what? You're going to get a fabulous education. You're going to have tons of fun. And you're probably still going to get a job. <laughs> so, and by probably, I mean, you will still get a job. <laughs> <laughs> like, waiting for that. <laughs> no, you will still get a job. I mean, none of us really went to like a a big famous school so didn't, I mean Northeastern's pretty big um but I like <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah well yeah I mean touching back on the internship thing I think that's a super important aspect as well because you know with Northeastern I chose it for the co-op not for the brand not for the size or anything like that um 
turned out it's more beneficial for Northeastern students that are in marketing or business or finance. Um, and, you know, my brother, for example, is also a Northeastern grad and he had two co-ops and his second co-op offered him a job after graduation and that set his career off to a, a great start. Um, but for everybody, it's a little different. And so you have to think about that. But again, it is, it's a great way to find out, do I actually want to be working in the field that I started out yep. studying in? Um, and if not, how can I remedy this? Yep. So that's why I chose Northeastern. Yeah. I think with Champlain, the biggest thing for me was I knew what major I wanted to go into when I started. And they have this thing called upside down curriculum. So when you're a freshman, you're taking courses in that major. So that's another thing to look out for too. Yeah. Look at the curriculum and see that. what's yeah. what's offered. Uh, because that that's, that's, that's that's such a, a great opportunity yeah. that if you jump in and you don't like it, yeah. you, you have that opportunity yeah. to bounce yeah. right out. That's fabulous. Yeah. So, um, and then the second thing going off of that stuff is talking about debt and stuff and how generally people say, you know, I wish I'd gone to the public tuber institution. I am proud of my decision. If I went back, I would still choose Champlain every single time. And I, I do have student debt. That's that's a reality that I have. And I wish I had less of it. If I could go back, I would do better high school. <laughs> so I got more scholarship, honestly. Um, and I would have signed up for College Express plug, um, a bit sooner um, than in undergrad and, and used like the scholarship search and things like that. And I did get some, some sort of outside scholarships, but that's, that's you know, another option too is looking for outside scholarships. It doesn't all have to be through the institution. Um, and there are, there are plenty of ways to make going to college cheaper. And if you're going in as sort of a moderate student, you can also appeal sort of the second year to the financial aid office and say, look, I have gotten straight A's. Uh, I am, I've been on presence list both semesters. Is there anything else I can do for financial aid? And you can appeal and you can ask for more money. Um, I have several friends who ended up doing that. They, they got more money. So they are very, you know, they're understanding. Exactly. Every, everybody that I've talked to and met with on, on boards and stuff like that have been, you know, they know mm -hmm. what, what, uh, you know, undergraduate students are going through and yeah. they know that, you know, we are on a tight budget. So yeah. they're also, pretty understanding. It's also a benefit you can look for um, post grad. A lot of companies, and I was reading an article in like Forbes uh, that said a lot of companies are now doing student loan repayment. You may have to stick with the company for like five to 10 years, mm -hmm. but. They won't repay your loans, might as well stick with them. <laughs> so, some, some things to look out for, some things to think about. Yeah. I think uh, even just jumping back to not money related, yeah. but uh, for culture wise, a lot of schools will offer like a night over type deal. Uh, before you're even accepted, you can just go and spend a night with a group of people like, and live in the dorm and experience that. So, I use that to my benefit a few times of staying over a night. Depending on who you get to, uh, yes, it could be good, it could be bad, and mm -hmm. that might leave a bad taste or a fantastic one in your mouth, but that's a great opportunity to take, and especially any orientations that they have, any open houses, anything like that, just even, get out there. Even visiting friends, too. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I, I converted a friend over to transfer <laughs> to my right. school just because he came over and visited and had, a, had an absolute blast. I think any way you can find a current student, whether, you know, if you played a sport with a current student at a school that's on your list, you know, yeah. reach out to them even if you weren't best buddies. Yeah. You can just say, hey man, what's what's your experience been like? Yeah. You know, what advice do you have to offer me about the school? Yeah. And um, a lot of schools offer, you know, student stories, student spotlights, get in touch with current students. And a lot of students that love their school want to talk to prospective yeah. students and say, yeah. hey, say, you should come here. It's great. To talk about yeah. my school. Right, and, right. You know, I, I even gave some family friends that were just on campus giving a tour, and I was like, I'm going to give you my personal tour, and, like, show you <laughs> all the real, like, cool stuff that they don't really cover right. on the, the standard tour. And, yeah. And so, it, it's cool. It's kind of gratifying to see uh, somebody else get some enjoyment out of your. Here on campus. So find you a Devon at yes. school that you're looking to go to. Come visit me four years ago. <laughs> and um, you can also talk to your guidance counselor and see if any recent alum from your high school yep. um, go to that school and see if they can connect you with them, whether it's through email or, or social media or some way if possible, yeah. or even having you meet them while you're on campus. Um, yeah, sorry, so that they that. can. Um, so that you can have that experience and then see where someone with a relatively similar background to you fares at that school mm -hmm. um, as well. And it's so easy to network now with like you just hop on Facebook and you can type in the name of the school and probably you see like which one of your friends have made eventually exactly. made it there 
And that's exactly what I did. And I just shot somebody a message, asked them how they liked it. And, and they ended up becoming a good support group to, to eventually when you go to that school, you have a uh, community there. Socialize. <laughs> Yeah, even uh, Rachel, who was on our last podcast, is an admissions person. So if you don't, for whatever reason, have a good guidance counselor, you don't have friends, like, you can <laughs> reach out to uh, somebody that's working at the school, and they'll be more than happy to help you. Rachel was very ecstatic on our podcast about she loved when people would come in and talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, and she was able to give them that experience, and also that set up a good connection for them when they're trying to get into the school too. She already has that name recognition of, oh, this person's interested, I'll pick them over somebody that has kind of similar grades and similar extras, but you know, they've shown interest and they want to come here.